Good morning, and welcome to the Universalist Church in which love is the spirit. We are glad you are here, here in the sanctuary or anywhere in the world, especially those visiting or returning after a time away. I am Lisa Smith Horn, one of your representatives on our board of trustees. If you are a visitor, we hope you'll talk with our welcome team or visit our webpage, www.westhartfordu.org, to learn more about us. Our guest book or online contact page will help you get onto our electronic mailing list. Our electronic communications are the best way for us to stay connected. We look forward to helping you become a part of the Universalist Church. We are sti still dealing with the pandemic and spikes are happening again due to holiday gatherings and group contacts. Since most people have been vaccinated, the risk of severe illness is still considered low. However, if you are unvaccinated or would prefer a mask, 
Our ushers have some that we're happy to share with anyone wanting or needing one to be protected. And we have an important announcement to be shared today. So following service, make sure you wind your way downstairs to Fisk Hall because we are having two exciting things. Some people aren't going to think the first one that I mentioned is exciting, <laughs> but it is in terms of future. So we will have our budget meeting, but we will also be celebrating Diane, Reverend Diane, and the welcoming back of Reverend Adam. So will you two please stand? Stand up. She hates standing. <laughs> so please join us in Fisk Call. There'll also be fellowship through Zoom. As you just heard, we have important business to handle, so please be present. If you need help finding your way to Fisk Hall for our fellowship hour, any member of the church will be happy to guide you. Just look for someone wearing a Universalist Church name tag. You can find the link for Zoom in your weekly news or our Breeze calendar. If you aren't getting the weekly news, please sign up for it on our website. And now I invite you to take a moment to make your mobile phone silent, turn off your email, put away your keyboards, and settle in for worship. Welcome to everyone here and all of you in cyberspace. As we light our chalice here in the sanctuary, please join us with your home chalice or your home candle. 
And as we light our chalice this Sunday, we light it in celebration of a new beginning. It is this first Sunday of a new month, the month fondly referenced as the month of the heart. It also is the Sunday when Reverend Adam returns from his sabbatical, and it's also the Sunday when we spend quality time thanking Reverend Diane for all her marvelous ministry among us during these past six months. In honor of all these new beginnings, I will speak the words from Reverend William Schultz. Come into this place of peace and let its silence heal your spirit. Come into this place of memory and let its history warm your soul. Come into this place of prophecy and power and let its vision change your hearts. Our opening hymn is hymn number 270 in the gray hymnal. Please rise in body or in spirit if you are able, in the sanctuary or wherever you are so we can sing together. Hymn number 270, O Day of Light and Gladness. of our affirmation, our covenant, as printed in the order of service. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is its law. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. Please be seated. Our time for all ages today is titled, What About That Glass? In a quiet section of West Hartford, there lived two wonderful six-year-olds. They actually only lived like 
a half a block apart on a cul-de-sac. Tobias lived on the right side of the street in a two-story house with a lovely front yard. Tanya lived on the left side of the street in a single-story house with a large screened-in front porch, but only about six feet from the sidewalk. Tanya had a large backyard. Tobias and Tanya were in the same grade at school, and they rode the same bus to and from. They sometimes played soccer in Tanya's backyard or used their quiet neighborhood street in the winter season after a snow for what they dubbed snow hockey. However, Tobias and Tanya had different ways of seeing things. As things toward the end of winter, around the last days of February into March approached, Tobias would look up and see the Canadian geese returning in their formation. He'd say, oh, here come the geese. The pond at the park will be filled with poop. And when I walk my dog, I'll have to watch where we walk. Tanya would look up and see the same geese. And her response would be, oh, I can't wait to see how many new goslings will grace the pond this spring. Last year, we almost had five new families of six each. Those goslings are always so cute to watch and as they learn how to swim. Another way of viewing things through their eyes is how they approach preparing for their summer lemonade and pretzel stand that they open the first weekend of May. Tobias measures out everything, making sure all the cups are stacked neatly and that they have plenty of frozen pink lemonade and regular lemonade in the freezer and enough change in their cash box to be able to meet the needs of their customers. Tanya, however, is concerned about the way their setup looks. Are there pretty flowers on the table? Is there enough shade where they place their, their, uh, losing a word, where they place their stand? for everyone who comes to visit their, them? Have they gotten all their flyers out in their neighborhood and the ones on either side of them so that they have a large number of customers? Tobias worries about the issues around enough supplies and Tanya worries about the way their stand is displayed. They like doing things together, and they know they approach things differently. They appreciate those differences. They even had a discussion about that one day when they were cleaning up after their lemonade stand's success. Tobias held up his cup of lemonade, and Tobias noted I see this glass and am amazed at how empty it is. I really drank all that. Tanya, on the other hand, held up her cup. <laughs> Tanya noted, I see this glass and the covering we put into the lemonade for St. Patrick's Day is still there. <laughs> And I'm excited at how full it still is. I still have so much more to enjoy in my glass. They laughed, as you did, when you saw those two glasses. After all, they looked exactly alike, except for the color. They talked about how they certainly can be seen very differently 
and how that explains some of the differences they experience when Tanya and Tobias are together, working on a project or studying or playing snow hockey. Tobias and Tanya decided as they were giggling that yes, they did many things each day, some together, some apart. Some looked alike, some looked very different, yet they both enjoyed doing stuff with one another. They liked the balance they found, even if their way of viewing what they were engaged with was different. They concluded that since they really liked one another, really cared for one another, that recognizing balance in half full and half empty glasses was fine and a-okay. And that is our story for today. Let's sing the children out with We Will Keep a Place for You. The words are in your order of worship. We will keep a place for you wherever you may go. We'll sustain the home of faith and love you've come to know. The voluntary offering, the sharing of our resources for our shared work as a religious community, is a spiritual practice for all of us. By offering your time, talent, and resources to this community, you help us serve the members, friends, and wider community of this congregation. As part of that service, we share our general offering each week with organizations that do the work in the world that brings us ever closer to creating the beloved community of which we are a part. This month, we share our offering with the UU Service Committee, also referred to as UUSHSC. Sorry. The Universalist Unitarian Service Committee is a nonprofit, non sectarian organization advancing human rights together with an international community of grassroots partners and organizations and advocates. They focus their work on intersecting roots of injustice to defend rights at risk due to criminalization and systemic oppression of people based on their identity. They defend the rights of people displaced due to climate conflict or economic hardships and respond to humanitarian crises as partners with people whose access to aid is the most limited. UUSC advances human rights and social justice around the world, partnering with those who confront unjust power structures and mobilizing to challenge oppressive policies. Their work is grounded in the belief that all people have inherent power and dignity. To give electronically, please use the QR codes on your order of service, the links in the description if you are online, or those on our website to make your donation to our offering. Here in the sanctuary, our offering will now be gratefully received.
I gratefully receive these treasures that you've shared with this community and our wider community. Bless you and thank you for your generosity. Please rise in body and spirit if you are able and let us say together number 557, A Common Destiny. The pulpit side, which is this side, will read the italics and the lectern side will read the Roman type. All people, those we love and those we know not of, are united and share the same destiny. Our brothers and sisters, strangers, flowers of the field, snowflakes, volcanoes, and moonbeams, birth, life, death, unknown, known. Unknown. Our destiny from unknown to unknown. May we have the faith to accept this mystery and build upon its everlasting truth. Let us join in singing our doxology. Let us hold in our prayers this day and our hearts of compassion, Nora S., who is beginning her rehabilitation at Jerome Home, and ask that you give her a call or send her a card to support her efforts. It looks like Nora will be there for a substantial amount of time, so I wanted you to know that. Judy B. asks for continued prayers for her recovery from her recent illness. She too loves getting cards from our congregation members. Her illness followed almost immediately after the death of her husband, so it has been a very difficult time for Judy. And Judy is presently at Autumn Lake in Cromwell and will probably be there through the middle of February. Peggy G's son had a stroke this past week. Shane has a good prognosis and his daily therapy is helping his recovery in Savannah, Georgia. If you have a Caring Bridge account, please check out Beth B.'s latest update regarding Tracy W. Tracy will begin a new treatment regimen this coming week. Karen H. and Sarah E. ask that we remember the anniversary of the death of their mom, Martha Bubby Wagman H. It has been six years since she died unexpectedly and the entire family continues to miss her deeply. Finally this day, let us offer prayers of gratitude and thanksgiving for the ministries of Reverend Diane and Reverend Adam. We send Diane forth to continue to share her gifts with others and let her know we will miss her presence here. So, 
don't be a stranger. We welcome back Reverend Adam, hoping he had a very meaningful and rich sabbatical and is ready to move forward in 2024. Now, let us allow these spoken words and prayers, as well as those held in each of our hearts, to be present with us in our shared silence. And now let us sing Spirit of Life. by Krista Tippett. If we are stretching to live wiser and not just smarter, we will aspire to learn what love means, how it arises and deepens, how it withers and revives, what it looks like as a private good but also as a common good. I long to make this word echo differently in hearts and ears not less complicated, but differently so. Love as muscular, resilient. Love as social, not just about how we are intimately, but how we are together in public. I want to aspire to a carnal, practical love. Eros become civic, not sexual, and yet passionate, full-bodied because it is the best of which we are capable. Love is also supremely exacting, not always, but again and again. Love is something we only master in moments. It crosses, crosses the chasm between us and likewise brings them into relief. It is a captive to the human condition as anything we attempt. Love is the superstar virtue of virtues and the most watered down word in the English language. I love this weather. I love your dress. And what we've done with the word, we've done with this thing, this possibility, this essential bond, this act. We've made it private, contained it in family when its audacity is in its potential to cross tribal lines. 
We've lived it as a feeling when it is a way of being. It is the elemental experience we all desire and seek most of our days to give and receive. The exacting and living aspiration of love does send us inside to know and honor the particularities of our identities and our struggles. But it coaxes us out again to an encounter with the vastness of human identity. Spiritual geniuses and saints have always called humanity to love, as have social reformers who shifted the world on its axis. What is love? Answer the question through a story about the last time you saw it, then go and be it. Our second reading is from Balance, Positioning Yourself to Do All Things Well by Tori Roberts. Balance is not about learning to effectively give pieces of yourself to important things. It's knowing and becoming all of yourself and then giving your whole abundant self to everything and everyone your life is assigned to. Balance will teach you to align with the highest version of yourself in any given moment, a version of you that, among many things, replaces anxiety with peace, dysfunction with progress, and stagnation with unlimited creativity. Balance is actually a spiritual location and requires spiritual means and spiritual insights to get there. Perhaps the first step on this journey is no step at all, but simply a pause to stop and perceive where you are. As we begin our journey to balance, we must first realize that balance is not a discipline, an activity, or an exercise. Balance is a place. That's right, balance has a location. Those who find the location of balance learn to live in it. My reference to balance as a place is not a hyperbole. Balance is really a place, but perhaps in a way that is different from what you might first consider. You won't find balance on a map, on a globe, or in an atlas. You aren't able to track it using the GPS on your smartphone. Balance isn't a physical place. It's a spiritual place within a spiritual dimension. Balance requires one to dig deep because the path to it commences from the deepest part of ourselves.
This day is filled with containers. <laughs> containers of lemonade, containers of red and green colored water, containers of words welcoming people home, containers of gratitude for sharing gifts in ministry, and containers challenging each one of us here to perhaps fill those containers in new ways. I am honored this day to welcome back my colleague, Senior Minister Reverend Dr. Adam Robersmith. And I am thoroughly thrilled and honored to have with us, after your time of renewal and refreshment, his presence. I'm also honored to say a huge and vibrant and crazy wild because of, of me. Thank you to Reverend Diane Daniels for your love, your care, your compassionate presence to all of us during your time among us. I begin my sharing with all of you today not only in a spirit of gratitude and gracious welcoming, but with a story I am sure most of you have heard many times before. But in reference to Tobias and Tanya, I'm going to share it with you in a different view. Recognizing that one can look at something and yield another fertile way of imagining it. The story is about a professor who was demonstrating to his class a different way of looking at time. I'm adapting that same story this morning to have you consider not how you spend your time, but rather how you share who you are how you share your ministry, whatever that may be, with one another. I have here an empty vase. Should I turn it upside down so that the, you know, the, the, the magician in me works? No, okay. We're going to use this to demonstrate our capacity to share ministry, to examine how we balance our efforts each day, to see if we possibly can be more in tune with what we experience, paying deeper attention to all we choose to care for. So this is sort of a semi-interactive exercise, so I need you to pay full attention. Back to our empty jar. As the professor did in the story, I'm going to fill this jar with rocks. They are thick, solid rocks. And I want you to pretend these rocks are the actions you must take every single day to survive. Things like breathing, eating, resting, which we don't do well, working, we do extremely well. The things that are crucial to support your daily existence. And now that all the stones are in the vase, I have some questions for you. Do you see these rocks as balanced? Why or why not? I'm asking these questions and giving you time to think about them so that you can answer them within you, that deep place of coming home within. Now, I'm going to add pebbles to this jar. Pretend these pebbles are the moments you take between the crucial actions in your day.
that you add moments of questioning, moments of celebration, Examples might be walking around the block after you get home from school or work or the run to the grocery store or going up and down the stairs inside your house to get something, to put your laundry in the laundry room, to clean the bathroom up on the third floor, whatever but acknowledging what a grace it is to be able to do that, to go up and down stairs, to walk, whatever. Recognizing the simple wonder and grace of being able to walk. You could do the same with just having a lovely conversation over a donut, that's another example. Having a lovely conversation over a donut with some coffee. Or while riding an escalator or an elevator in the place where you work. The pebbles represent the moments of awareness that call us deeper. And as the song from our choir noted, the moments, through the air, there's a calling. There's a voice I can hear that will lead me home. Now that as many of the pebbles that'll go into this jar are there, Here are my questions for this level of awareness. Are these mixed rocks and pebbles balanced? What would make that possible? What could you pay attention to in your life to help that become so? And at this point, I'm going to take a moment to remind you of the words from one of our readings this morning. Balance isn't a physical place. It's a spiritual place within a spiritual dimension. Balance requires one to dig deep because the path to it commences from the deepest part of who we are. Now, our next step in this lovely jar, besides dropping pebbles all over the floor, is to place sand in this jar. And I want you to think about sand as the moment of reflection that you share when you begin your day more when you end your day or both. Moments when you recognize where you are, where you were when the day began, and where you now stand whenever you take your final reflection as another day comes to a close. And so, our next question is, How does the sand represent the bonding that can happen in between the rocks and the pebbles and the moments where you and who you are play a significant role? What part of yourself have you given in a day? What part of yourself have others received in that same day? How are you balancing that giving and receiving? How are you realizing loving in the midst of it all? As our reading from Krista Tippett noted, love is also supremely exacting. Not always, but again and again. Love is something we only master 
in moments. So how does love slip between the rocks and the pebbles of your life each day? How do you make room for it? And finally this morning, I will pour water into my jar. And as you can see, as I pour the water, it moves in between the sand and the rocks and the pebbles. This represents all the ups and downs, the half full and the half empty, the times we each experience that in all we do. Every one of us in this room today, in this sanctuary, has had times when we are elated and so happy we can't even begin to explain the happiness. Our tears just flow and we can't explain where they're coming from. But also, each one of us has had times when we are so sad we can't put that into words either. It's just an empty and bleak time for us. But as you can see from the water seeping down into the bottom of the jar, it will sit here, I could have it sit here for another hour, and the absorption would happen and everything would get soaked into the rocks and the pebbles and the sand. And it would get even more balanced than it was right now. So today, we acknowledge it is one, a day of balancing, welcoming home, and letting go. This is a balancing moment, an act of our congregation where we recognize the rocks, the pebbles, the sand, and the water, and know all those elements make up the jar of ministry. It is a time to recognize that in all we are, say, do, and continually become, we are called to balance our efforts through and with love as our focus. We as a community are called to keep trying to build that beloved community. We celebrate this effort as the ministry where love is indeed the spirit. And may it always be so. Please join me now in singing our closing hymn, hymn number 128, For All That Is Our Life, in the gray hymnal.
let us now speak our unison benediction together. Engage with the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return to no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. And honor all beings. Please remain for our post salute. Don't forget, downstairs is the party. <laughs> <laughs>